Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about multi-tenancy on cloud. You must have heard this term many times uh, that people are talking about having a multi-tenant environment or having multi-tenancy. And typically in terms of cloud infrastructure, this term comes up many, many times. So we will look at what it means, what are the advantages, why did it come, what is the difference between a single tenant and multi-tenant. So let's get started. First of all, what is multi-tenancy on cloud? Multi-tenant, this term means that there are multiple tenants accessing a resource, basically sharing of resources between multiple clients. A tenant can be thought of somebody uh, like a customer or a client who is using some resource or service. So when there are multiple customers or clients using a service or a resource, there, sh there would be some kind of an overlap between the way they are sh sharing, uh, storing the data, the way they are using the compute. So how do we handle that, keep them segregated, secure, is all about multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy can be at different levels. It can be at storage level, compute level or networking level. But all in all, it means sharing of resources between multiple customers. Now, there were some misconceptions uh, due to which, so when cloud started getting prevalent and uh, people were thinking about going to cloud and using cloud, there were certain inhibitions or misconceptions that they had in their mind regarding multi-tenancy. As we all know, AWS, Google, Azure, all of them are public clouds. So they are definitely multi-tenant architectures. There are thousands and thousands of customers who are using the public services of these cloud providers. So the misconceptions around this multi-tenancy was people used to think that it is not secure since it is a public cloud, since there are multiple tenants, the data is getting stored together at some place. It is not safe. Some tenant may be able to read my data. So that was one of the biggest misconception related to security, related to data privacy, which was actually holding people back from going to cloud. And I'm talking about multiple or couple of years back when cloud was actually picking up. Now the situation has changed and people are adapting cloud. But initially that was a very big inhibition because they were multi-tenant and public environments. Then there was also a misconception that if I'm using cloud and it is a multi-tenant environment, I don't have any control over which node am I using. Is somebody else also using the same node or not? So do I essentially have the control to take care of what I am using and whether that is solely used by me or somebody else is also using it? And all in all, all of these factors actually uh, slowed down the adoption rate of cloud. But eventually it picked up and then it could be proved that even if it is a multi-tenant environment, the architecture is designed in such a way that there is a segregation at the data level, network level, compute level. And there are multiple features that each cloud vendor provides like virtual networks, etc., dedicated um, pathways to connect to on-prem and all of that. But it took some time to reach there. So this is some background of what were the misconceptions that people had while going to cloud due to multi-tenancy. Now, let us first talk about single tenant and the challenges so, so that we can appreciate why multi-tenancy is important or how it is handled. So what does single tenancy mean? It means there is a single tenant who is using a single compute, dedicated compute node. It's a one-on-one mapping, which means you have a tenant who has a dedicated compute resource. I'm talking about compute here, same goes with storage and networking, right? In single tenant, uh, the way it was working was that this, a particular tenant is tied to a particular compute node. The compute node knows the tenant and they have a relationship. So it's a one-on-one -on -one mapping. And essentially when there is a one-on-one -on -one mapping, which means it is stateful, it has to be stateful because one tenant is uh, accessing one compute node. So it is a stateful kind of a interaction. Now this will work well if we are having a very small setup with handful of tenants. But when we are talking about infrastructures where or cloud vendors or situations where there are tons of users, thousands of users, this kind of a setup becomes complicated. And there are a lot of disadvantages that come with it. 
for example outages now if a customer is tied to a particular compute if there is an outage the customer has to wait till that node comes up or till the, we can enable that compute again so at the time of outages there is a problem if there are upgrades to be done and there are thousands of customers with each of their dedicated computes we have to take care about a maintenance window for each of them and then do the upgrades so it becomes a it, it becomes a bottleneck there is a time that it takes scaling becomes difficult because now we are not scaling based on usage we are scaling based on the user a user is tied to a compute so if i have to scale i'm scaling that user so scale, it's not a horizontal scale so when number of users increase then this kind of a scaling becomes problematic so even though single tenancy is simpler it seems secure to people it is less hassle in terms of architecture or kind of maintaining that storage compute network isolation but it has this advantages of scaling not scaling of outages and upgrades now what came in to overcome this problem what came in is multi tenant environments where you have multiple users they are sharing a compute which means they are not tied to a particular compute they can uh, access any compute so any tenant can access any compute they can access one compute can be accessed by multiple tenants and those tenants can access any computes there is no tie up between compute and the tenant hence obviously this is a stateless architecture much much easier to handle lesser overheads advantages are you can horizontally scale based on usage now you are not tied to, uh, to you are not tying one tenant to a compute outage recovery is very very easy because you are not tied to a compute you can be redirected to a redirected to a different compute when there is an outage it can be a zero downtime upgrade we can spin up another compute upgraded one and then point the user to that so all in all this becomes extremely easy in terms of scaling outage recovery zero downtime upgrades but the problem here is it's a uh, much more complicated architecture to maintain rather than single tenancy because now you have to take care of all of those segregations at different levels for each of the tenant so that's how the single and multi tenant environments differ so simply put if we have to talk about a multi tenant environment think about it as a bank locker room which has multiple lockers now every locker is like a tenant so they are sharing a, a common environment which is the locker room but each of them have their own space which is not shared with anyone so some of the things are shared which is your locker room but each locker is dedicated to a particular customer who has the key to open the locker so that means the customer or the tenant is fully segregated from others and secure and they alone can access their own data so that's multi tenancy now one more thing or we would look at we looked at how it is structured what is the advantage but what do we have to keep in mind if we are building multi tenant environments so one of the core concepts that comes into play is virtualization we talk about we spoke about it in the last video so virtualization really helps in creating multi tenant environments because we can have one single physical node with a hypervisor we can actually spin up multiple vms on that node and they can be given to multiple tenants so that way virtualization really helps in creating a multi tenant architecture now some of the processes where we have to think about differently when we talk about multi tenant environments for example onboarding how do we onboard tenants to our environment what would be how do we maintain their profile how do we figure out that which tenant is corresponding to what resources so the onboarding is extremely important for example any cloud vendor has this concept of subscription concept of account just to box this tenant uh, into one logical unit so a tenant has to be associated with a subscription or an account to segregate them from others and to for us to segregate the storage network and compute at the architecture level so onboarding them to our environment is extremely important authentication and authorization is the key because we have so many people and we don't want them to run over each other's data we need to take care of authentication and authorization at every level storage compute network 
pain and isolation this goes hand in hand with the authorization and authentication every tenant has to be isolated no matter what then after doing the tenant isolation we also have to take care of metrics and billing so every tenant we have to take care of their billing how will they be billed it will always be pay per use but it has to be segregated every tenant has it has to be billed only for what they use and similarly we have to capture all the metrics for each tenant the metrics for each tenant has to be tracked and captured uh, so this is more like uh, whatever usage they are doing what what is happening on the ground with each of the resources what are the requests that are being made all of those metrics or telemetry needs to be captured for each of the tenant so this is all about what needs to be done for multi tenant architectures how they are useful or what it is i hope this video helps you to get a basic understanding of what multi tenant architectures are thanks for listening in please uh, do like share and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos thank you so much